Hi. Hi. Hey. Welcome back. Remember the last video where we talked about our top 10 least favorite builds ever? No. Well, <laughs> you should watch it. <laughs> you haven't seen it. No, you want to give me a, maybe the Cliff Notes version? Uh, yeah. Go right here and watch it. <laughs> See that? You said that was the worst? You kind yeah. of agree, though. Yeah, you agree with all Tell of me that. the call-out challenge wasn't the worst thing we were ever a part of, including his moment of... <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. Wait till this next season. I go on up to you, man. I know. So today... We're gonna give you our top 10 favorite builds that we've ever done. Are you ready? Number 10, Lightning. Now you guys remember we did a giveaway, Thunder and Lightning, it was two different trucks. Lightning was an F450, 2018 F450 that we cut in half. We bought it wrecked. This is when you couldn't buy F450s yeah. anywhere. They were literally sold out at every dealership everywhere and I was like, you had yours. I was like, I gotta have one of yeah. these. So we found a dude who had just wrecked it like out in Tennessee or something yep. and it got hit hard. And we got it back to the shop and I was like, you know what? This is cool, but I wanna put a flatbed on it. And they don't make an F450 cabin chassis long enough to put an 11 foot flatbed on. So what do we do? Stretched her. We stretched a truck that didn't, I've never seen anybody stretch an F450 because no. technically you can just buy an F550 with that same frame measurement, yeah. but it doesn't come in the platinum F450 trim. So it was a platinum F450. We cut 11 foot bed. It had super singles on the front and the rear. That thing had a, a ton of different wheel and tire combos. It really did. Then we did a fender setup that actually covered the tires in the front. Yep, we did the DBL design, like big industrial commercial yeah. F550 fenders. Then we did ADD our- ADD front bumper. We did, we did a bumper, but we custom built the ADD bumper, remember? Yes. We brought it out to match the fenders. I can't remember if we went from, yeah, we did an ADD bumper first, and then we switched over to Flog later. And then we actually, yeah, at the some Flog point- Flog was custom we, built for it. The ADD yes. got ripped off because I got stuck once. Yeah. And let me tell you why personally this was my favorite and why it's in the top 10. The truck was as plush as can be. Any F450 Platinum, any Platinum is is nice. just awesome. But when we actually stretched this truck and put bigger tires on it, this truck drove smoother than any truck I have ever driven to date. Because we put airbags on the back. And it was stretched, so it was like, it was so big that you couldn't, it wouldn't take hard hits. It distributed the load really well. It did. That truck was wrecked pretty hard. So we obviously had to fix the body damage. We stretched the frame, put the bed on it, and then made it kind of, it was my personal truck for a long time and made it the ultimate tow rig. This thing had 40, I think 44, 42 inch Goodyear's on it. And then we had, then we put 40 inch dualies on it. We yeah. switched back and forth for a while, but it just worked. That I, truck towed all of our stuff to SEMA. I think I have a picture of it towing. Okay, so the reason I love it so much, I put <laughs> 41,000 pounds on a trailer and drove in a, in a simulation in a simulation and i drove 31 hours straight Simulated. by myself mm -hmm. to texas when texas had the floods we had to get there like overnight i drove that truck by myself with 41,000 pounds all the way to texas and i loved every minute of it and then tested it to see if it was amphibious that was jim's brother that was jim's brother <laughs> yeah that truck was badass and that's why it's number 10. Number nine, number nine on our list of favorite builds of all time was also a vehicle that made it on our list of our least favorite builds, the F100. So if you watched the first YouTube of the 10 least favorite, you know. Wait, why was F100 on your least favorite? Good question. The first attempt. You and I got really pumped for a race and made it 100 yards. Remember yeah. the 100 yards? I remember we dropped the drive line. And remember the feeling of disappointment as we sat there and the crowd looked at us? Well, unfortunately, we were gonna go. Yeah, unfortunately it was right in front of everyone. Everyone. Well, that's why it made the list of our least favorite builds because the first time around, not great. Second time around, after we spent like two years putting the right amount of money and parts and testing and just making it super cool. And the right kind of guy, and, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron stepped in. We put Aaron right on guy. that build and Aaron was committed to making, because Aaron, remember, that build was what brought Aaron to work for us. He came to our shop one day when we were doing it for the Mint 400 and was like, hey, I'll help build this thing. He ended up not sleeping for seven days, stayed with us forever. Yep. And then he just ended up staying in Utah and never went back to California after that. And he became one of our top guys. One of the greatest guys we've ever had in the shop, just overall talent, skill, and he, put his heart and soul into making sure that F100 kind of had a chip on his shoulder with that truck because yeah. it was something that he had started, his first project ever here, and he wanted to see it all the way through the finish line, which is exactly what we did when we beat Todd LaDuke in a desert race. And I still own the F100 to sit in the back lot. We did a new paint job on it for the last reveal on the TV show. You probably saw it was like black, white, and red. It looked cool, but we're going back to the original paint job. Yeah, the Golf paint scheme, just the Golf oil. You guys have seen the Ford, like the GT4 D paint scheme. That's what we're doing. We're going back to it because it just looks so crisp. And then uh, maybe we'll run a desert race with it. 
And then who knows? And you'll see why it's on our top 10 list. Moving on, we're going to hit you with number eight on our list of favorite builds of all time, which what is you got? It's the Kenworth all day. In fact, all I probably, probably would put it higher, but there's some good ones on the list. We bought a logging truck out of Canada. Triaxle Kenworth Cummins engine. This truck was built for just like anything. But the problem was it had been used for just about anything before we bought it. And she so she was hard. a little bit, uh, she'd been rode hard before we got her. Everything she'd been proven. On that. She'd been proven. Everything proven. on that truck needed to be redone. We redid a lot of stuff on that truck and we didn't need the sleeper because we're not doing a lot of over the road trucking where somebody would have to sleep in the back. So what we did, we cut the sleeper up, put crew cab doors on it. And now it's a crew cab semi truck. It's got a big bench seat in the back. We can roll like six deep anywhere we go, pulling as much weight as we want to pull. And she's got a fresh Cummins ISX engine because the engine blew up, but she's good now. In fact, you'll see, you guys have already seen, if you've watched any of our recent videos, uh, the bulldozer video, yeah. you saw the Kenworth working really hard pulling that D8 dozer. The frack tank. Frack tank. Kenworth did wonders. The island recovery of the tractor. Yep. That thing, we use it a lot. So as far as like overall use that we get out of it, it might be the most used vehicle on this list. Pretty yeah. close. She works. Yeah. She puts in the work. Number seven. Seven. You know, I w normally we, 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 we take turns going back to back, but I'm going to take this I'm one. Gonna, I'm going to let you have this one. Well, that must be the broken Mino. You got it. I don't know why it's down on number seven, but we could talk about it later. We can well, maybe after you shut the cameras off. We we in counseling, we can go over that. <laughs> oh, Bro Camino. Should we tell them the real story of the Bro Camino? Oh, you know, that may be a whole nother episode no, in and of no, itself. No, let's tell them. The let's whole story? Them. You guys ready for truth time? We're going to have to abbreviate this a little bit. So we tell just found it in the junkyard. Number seven, Bro Camino. Number six on our list of favorite builds of all time, the Super Six. The Ooh. Super Six. The did Super you, Six. Did you do that just because it's called the Super Six? I actually didn't. I just barely saw that and I'm not mad about it. I'm That's quite pleased. That's how you know it's meant Number to be. six is Super Six, actually. Super Six, here's the story about that truck. SEMA 2014, we built the Mega Ram Runner. Awesome truck, amazing truck. We needed to find a way to tow it down to SEMA because it wasn't quite ready to make the trip. So I went down to the auction, bought an F550, cabin chassis, flatbed, crew cab, cool truck, loved it. Towed the Mega Ram down to SEMA, did its job, was great. On the way home from SEMA, I was driving that F550 flatbed, trailering the Mega Ram, and it came to me. This truck should be your SEMA truck next year. You should make it a 6x6. So I said, okay, let's do it. Next thing we know, we got to work, building it into a Super 6, and um, we used independent suspension uh, military Oof. MRAP axles. These things weigh like 2,000 pounds a piece. All-wheel steering, and then we were building it for SEMA, and I think we had three different engines fail before we found one that would yeah. actually work. We kept on having problems with the engine. That's where some of the infamous footage of us using lots and lots and lots of starter fluid trying to get the engine started made it on TV. And to be fair, the 6.4 motor everybody knows now at this point, they didn't yeah. know then, but that motor was a garbage motor. It's a great motor and then it's a garbage motor. Yeah, it's really probably. fast. It's a, it's a awesome throwaway motor. So long story short, we built it. We tried to put it on airbag suspension because I wanted independent airbag suspension. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Well, we took it to SEMA with airbags on it and the airbags just never Did not work. <laughs> airbags on independent suspension is very difficult because the amount of load and weight that uh, multiplies on an independent suspension lever arm is more than an airbag calibration system is willing to put up with. So the truck was always like leaning funny or this way or that way. We were able to lift it up lower at SEMA, but after we got back from SEMA, we said, nope, this truck needs coil springs. So we got rid of the airbags, put coil springs on it, took it to Moab, rode some trails, had a good time with it. And then we had a customer come to us and say, hey, I want that, I want to promote with my company. And we said, okay. We did another rebuild on it, went through it, freshened everything up, put a wrap on it and sold it to Niche, which was like an action sports company. We put a t-shirt turret cannon on the back and uh, they had a good time with it. And then they sold it to Brigade Surfboards, who I think currently, currently owns, owns it, maybe. Um, and they use it to promote their surfboards. And, and they it's still actually use it regularly. Yeah, drives up and down the freeway all the time yeah. on military components, mm -hmm. just like we built it. That's so sweet. It's, uh, it was a cool truck. It was definitely more of like a Frankenstein science project mm -hmm. rather than something that was meant to be driven every single day. But it, uh, I've never seen anything else like it. No, definitely. There's six by sixes out there, but there's no six by sixes made out of an F550 with military axles. With rear with steer. Rear steer on yeah, all the whole six. truck would crab walk down Cruise, the road. Cruising around that roundabout, the first uh, day yeah. we pulled it out was the coolest thing ever. Just yeah. rear steer. So, on the bed. that was number six. Number five. Freedom! Freedom bus. I 100% did not think that that was going to actually work or function. What? No, I didn't. No, I think we all thought for a minute that it was just gonna be a gimmick. Yeah, and we did. We really thought like, this is gonna be something cool that's fun to look at. Yeah, I did think it was gonna banana in the middle. It turned out on the island, 
to be one of the coolest driving vehicles. There's the only way to describe driving the Freedom Bus is freedom. Go jump in your living room and then drive yeah. it to the store. Yeah. yeah. That's the Freedom Bus. It's so big so and the engine's in the back, so it's a rear engine pusher, so it's pretty quiet. Yeah. It is the most bizarre feeling in the world. You're floating on these giant monster truck shocks and tires. How big were the tires? They're 66 inch uh, 66 Monster Jam tires. Yeah. BKTs, tires. yeah. Got them from Tom Metz. Yep. That's right, that's right. We went down to Monster Jam and brought them back. Freedom Bus is one of the most capable vehicles that we have, as you may have noticed in the tug of war video, which is right here, just in case you missed it. That bus is, I mean, it just goes, and it's still parked at our lot, still ready to party. In fact, we have not used that nearly enough. Mm -mm. So this summer, we might go, Yes. We might go experience yes. the Freedom and the uh, Freedom Bus. The, Whistling Diesel was, made his truck float. I wonder if we could put duels on the bus and make it float. Ooh. Turn it into a barge. The bus is awesome. It's got PRP seats, seating for like 25, 30 Wet people. Wet sound speakers. Wet sounds everywhere. Push button transmission, big Cummins engine. That thing is just sweet. If you guys yeah. ever want like an awesome vehicle for an event, Freedom Bus is your guy. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Call Except us. for he's a little hard to transport. So No, we'll drive it there. Number four is, number four is so much to me. Number four is redemption. Number four is proving that haters don't mean when you put your mind to something, anything is possible. That, my friends, is the fail of the year. Yes, the I knew fail it. of the year. Fail of the year actually made honorable mention in our least favorite builds because the original what? version of it, the Can Am, when it failed oh, on I us. I should have been here for this video. Yeah, well, the Can Am failed us big time. Hard. So after Can Am said, no, we don't want anything to do with this build, this monster truck crazy build that you're doing, Polaris reached out to us almost immediately and said, we like what you're up to. How about we send you a razor to do it with? Oh. A brand new razor? We're like, okay. That was the beginning of our relationship with Polaris. They believed in a crazy idea that we had and they put their money where their mouth was and sent us a unit for it. And so we turned the Razor into a monster truck. We built a full tube chassis for it, drop transfer case. A detachable. Yeah, full, full Yeah, it was chassis, full bolt-on. Yeah. The idea was to be able to make a, a full bolt-on monster truck kit for a Polaris Razor. And that's exactly what we were able to do. We then ran 54 inch Mickey Boss. Thompson bot claw tires, yeah. uh, MRAP axles, and then, we took it to Moab and we and were like, all right, let's see if this thing's really capable. And every one of us were scared that it was going to break fairly, fairly quick. In fact, you, blow pulled me, you pulled me aside and said, hey, this has not been tested. Don't make us look stupid. <laughs> like, I didn't tell you not to make us Because I was driving at the time. Oh. <laughs> I was the first one to drive it, I think, after you and actually like give it some hell. And it did very well. I yeah, think it did every it trail that we did in Moab. Yeah. Like the only one that was kind of difficult for it was Escalator. Yeah. And because Escalator, I think, popped one of the tires. Yeah. Which is weird because it's a feed lock. I don't know how that happened. But the failure years never let us down. We broke one driveline part, and that's it. We twisted the driveline, didn't we? Yeah. yeah he and did. it was he landed $100, on the $100 fix, and, and we fixed it that day. But we were thought we thought it was going to blow every belt because of how big the tires were. And I don't think we've gone through one belt. We've never blown no. a belt. We've never, never done never a, belt. Blown a belt. I think we should bring the fail of the year out to a vlog. I agree. Maybe we take it on the Moab. We still we have a bunch of people to take a Moab. Before we give you the top three. I want you to put in the comments below what you think the best three builds are that we've ever done. First person to get the top three right gets this hat. Ooh, Off my head. Jeez. The top three. Brrr. Top three builds of all time. Number three is Hercules, Hercules. Hercules. Yeah, the buddy. monster truck. You guys, Hercules has been, well, it was a labor of love for sure. We bought it at the auction and we thought we were just gonna do a quick flip on it. And then we found out that the frame was completely toast. And that's when we were like, okay, well, Build a mud truck. So we built one of the best looking mud trucks I've ever seen. Also, fun fact about mud trucks, mud truck guys are very passionate about their mud trucks. Very passionate. And as people saw us building this, they instantly took it as like a, like fighting words. Yeah, I don't know but why. But we weren't really calling any mud trucks out because this was designed to be more of like a ride truck, not like a mega truck designed to mm -hmm. jump and stuff like that. Wouldn't hang in the mega truck world. It would not hang for a second. No. It's not designed to be mega yeah. truck. It's designed to just kind of like stomp through mud. Which brings me to my next point. We don't have a lot of like deep swampy mud here in Utah that we can drive vehicles in. Uh, all of our swamps are protected. You can drive an airboat in them, maybe. So we built it, took it down to reveal it. And the only place we could find enough mud and water was actually the shores of a lake. So we drove it through the shores of a lake, did an awesome reveal, had a great time. And we had plans at that time to either sell it or do a giveaway with it or do something. And then we drove it and I fell in love with it. And I said, well, we're keeping it. I know the exact moment that you fell in love with it. Yeah. When we were in the back lot and you decided to go full ham and do donuts in it. 
Yes. And it did, and it did awesome yeah. donut. That truck was born to do donuts on pavement. Yes. Right? Because it's stuck, because it's all wheel steer. So the rear wheel steer, you crank it over. And the way those mud tires sit, they don't have a lot of contact with the asphalt. So it's kind of like on its tippy toes. So when you start spinning and then the turbo lights, that truck just turns into the Tasmanian <laughs> devil. Literally just a whirlwind tornado spinning around. And it also just has really good curb appeal. When you see that truck and you see how really huge it is. You get turned on. You do. And then you get to see it in action. We've done some wild stuff with that truck, such as sled pulling. Yes. Remember? Oh, right. yes, we did a full sled pull up at the Edge Performance Days, and I think it did a full pull. It did. Um, we've done tug of wars. We've gone up in the snow. We've done recovery missions. Mm -hmm. We've jumped it. Thank goodness, no. That truck has been awesome, which is why we still have it. I think we need to find some mud to put it in, though. We do definitely need to take it to. Actually, we haven't used it enough. I don't know if I've told you guys this yet. I'm, I'm thinking. You haven't. I haven't. I definitely haven't. This is the first everyone's going to hear of this. I'm thinking within the next month or two, possibly even May, we're going to do a mud event here in Utah. Yeah. Okay. We did one five years ago, and it was awesome. You got to realize, for awesome. those of you watching this in Florida, Texas, down south, you guys have mud events all over the place. Utah does not have a lot of mud events. So I think we're going to dig a pit, put together an event, and to call out some of the best med, mud and mega trucks in the country and put up a big purse, like a big purse. Like 25 bucks. <laughs> Maybe talking, 30. Talking a big purse for some people to come out and compete and Maybe put on a on. show for Utah uh, motorsports enthusiasts because Utah does not get a lot of access to mud events. So if you live in Utah or surrounding states, stay tuned because we may be making an announcement very soon. And if we do do that, well then you're obviously gonna see Hercules stomping his way through the mud pit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, there's only two trucks really left. And I would say number two is gonna be the Mega Ram. You're all right, my friend, the Mega Ram! Number, number two, two, the Mega Ram. The truck that started it all. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Safe to say. I mean, what put us where we are today? We'd done some builds up until up before the Mega Ram, so we'd been building trucks since 2010. In fact, we had done my six door, and that had gone viral at our mud event, mm -hmm. and that's when we I went think to Mega Ram was the first military axle yeah. truck we did. We went harder. Mega Ram was originally going to be just a six door mega cab on Dodge axles, and that's when I met Steve. Steve was Steve. one of my very first mechanics. One day he came by the shop and he's like, hey, um, you should put military axles on this thing. I was like, well, do you want a job? And then we hired him. And you guys probably saw Steve on the first couple seasons of Diesel Brothers. Steve is a very, very intelligent off-road fabricator. He's He's got all sorts of different talents and skills, but T, Steve was the guy that like worked night and day to help us get the Mega Ram ready for SEMA 2014. And it was his idea to put military axles under it. And he's kind of the one who started my addiction into the military axle world. And that truck went from a salvage. I think I have, let's see if we can find it. There's a before and after picture. Yeah. We bought it as a salvage I truck have a picture from the salvage auction down at Copart and turned it into this masterpiece. We had worked with a company that did the stretch for us, and I'm not gonna say who they are because to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of respect for them. And rather than talk bad about people, we just don't talk about them at all. Yeah. Right? We'll just skip it. Yeah. Mega Ram Runner was the first big fab project that we ever did at our shop. Up until that point, we were just kind of doing like fixing service trucks and paint jobs and this stuff here and there. So that truck, when we took it to SEMA, was there was a lot of learning that had been done on it. A lot. And again, one of those trucks that we had built in a very short amount of time, like 30 days, I think. Yeah. We used a lot of industrial parts on that thing. A lot of industrial parts on a lot of like square tubing and yeah. like, like <laughs> no, we didn't have access to a plasma cutter back then. We didn't have access to a laser table. We were literally just like cutting parts by hand, put the suspension together and it worked really, really well. Yeah. Cool thing about Mega Ram is when we took it to SEMA, the whole world went nuts over it. It's like, this is the craziest looking truck in the world. Um, and then after SEMA, we took it back to the shop and kind of, did a couple, little bit more work to it and said, all right, well, let's show the world what this is capable of because we don't build show trucks. We don't like to build trucks that just go look good. We wanted to show the world that it worked, which is when a couple videos of it going up potato salad down in Moab went viral because people were like, holy shit. we thought this was just a show truck. Turns out we it, were beating them. Yeah, on the military axles and it was conquering everything in Moab. I, I never something tried it. to note about this vehicle also is that it was running on natural gas. On the show, we brought the Megram at, in and we rebuilt and redid everything. Like all the stuff that had been done in a rush got fixed and it's like literally perfect. And then we parked it and it's been sitting in the back lot ever, ever since. since. What's your favorite Mega Ram story? Mine? Uh, when Heavy D lit my back. That's on my fire. favorite story too. That's why it has flaming stacks now. Yeah, it does have flaming stacks. Driving. <laughs> We're driving driving. over a canyon pass here in Utah <laughs> late at night. Everybody was kind of, you know, getting ready to fall asleep in the truck. We had all of our bags in the back. Somebody 
looked in the rearview mirror and was like, a fire bro, I think we're on fire. That was me. And I'm like, what do you mean we're on fire? And I turned around and looked backwards and there's a flame coming from the bed of the truck. We're like, we're on fire. Pull over. <laughs> this guy had taken his little duffel bag, his, little, his dad's duffel bag that he passed down from generations to generations, little Eddie takes, Bauer duffel bag. Yeah, he only takes one duffel bag with yeah. him on a trip and it's got like two items in it ever. And, he and it's it. always made out of denim and like really plasticky brown leather. He tossed it in the bed of the truck, tossed it right on top of the stacks and the stacks literally caught his bag on fire with all of his belongings up in flames and almost killed us all. We all almost died. I think I have a picture of you on the side of the highway. I'll see if I can pull it up. <laughs> There he is, with all of his charred belongings on the side on the side of the road. Mega Ram, been good to us, and it's still here. I don't know what I'm going to do with that truck, to be honest with you. we um, I do. We're here's a fun fact for you. Ride. I'm going to tell you guys. I'm going to be very honest with you. The Mega Ram is currently not able to be touched, really, or driven, at least, because of the doctor's lawsuit. So in the lawsuit, some of the trucks that we got in trouble for were trucks like the Mega Ram for having the deletes done. So the interesting part about that is the Mega Ram had already been deleted when we bought it from the auction. So we didn't delete it, we just worked on it. And then um, we drove it to the events and stuff like that we did. And then we added natural gas to it yeah, to we actually make made it, it more efficient and but cleaner. in the lawsuit, the doctors claim that that truck was very responsible for creating all sorts of pollution, which I uh, respectfully disagree with. But as part of our court order, the judge said, well, you gotta take those trucks that you have and return them to uh, stock, meaning not not the whole build, but the engine uh, performance part. So currently the Mega Ram is getting a DPF put on it, which is the most tragic thing I've ever heard in my entire life because it, it's, the truck has driven a total of maybe a few hundred miles ever, like maybe a thousand miles with Texas. So you're not seeing a lot of pollution on the roads with that truck and it runs pretty clean because it had natural gas on it. But like I said, we're complying with the court order and so it's getting all of the emissions components put back onto it and then once that's done, who knows, maybe it'll just be a lawn ornament. Maybe yeah. it'll get another lease on life. Another it's uh, The thing about a truck like that is very needy. Uh, it, you can't just park it in the back and then just go back there after six months and hope to start it and drive it. Like yeah. you gotta go back there and and call Congress to get a jump start going. I should talk sweet to it. Yeah, or be rough with it. Either way. I mean, it, it, yeah. It's a Either way, she starts every time. These trucks, all these big trucks that we build, are very needy. They require a lot of like ongoing maintenance and tweaks and tuning. And except for the next one. Except for the except number for one. The next one. Number, number one, one has been the most patient, the most indestructible, the most understanding, the, the most capable, most capable for sure. Mm -hmm. And I dare say probably has become the most popular build we've ever done simply because of what it's grown into. It's grown into a whole franchise. Before we get to our number one, we do have a lot of people to thank for getting us to where we're at now. A lot of talented people. Here's my honorable build mention. Somersault truck. Ooh, nice. How did that not make the top yeah. 10? I guess it's not really... It was a, it was a stunt. It was like cool. a one-time done. It like we never thing. used it ever since. But we made a truck literally do a somersault. And if you liked that truck, which everybody did because that was our highest rated episode ever, you're really gonna like what we got coming in this new season, yeah. which we're currently filming. I don't know if you guys know that or not. We are filming a new season right now that'll be coming out in the, gosh, the gosh. summer, let's call it. We're not gonna give you the exact date. We've got a build coming out that just might, and when I say might, will 100% blow our old somersault truck out of the water. It blew our minds. It's currently blowing my mind now. Presenting, coming to you live, number one build of all time. The truck that segued us into Monster Jam. The newest, hold on, wait. Don't, don't, don't blow it yet. <laughs> one of the newest and most popular monster truck franchises of all time. The one and only truck that jumped over an airplane. I was gonna sit. I was ready to sit. <laughs> Why didn't you say it? Because I, I thought we were going to keep doing more fun facts about it. Give me a B. R. O. Dozer. Yeah, bro, Dozer. The number one for a reason. Let me walk you guys through a timeline of the Bro Dozer franchise. Because you've seen multiple Bro Dozers and they're not the same. The original Bro Dozer was an F-350 that I bought at the salvage auction and I wanted to turn it into a rock crawler. We chopped the bed off, built a full tube chassis, had Gilly Fab out here in Tooele do a lot of fabrication work for us. Gilly did an awesome job took forever, uh, which is why that build was never covered like on the TV show or anything because it was just taking way too long. We turned that wrecked F-350 into the Brodozer rock crawler. And one day before we'd come up with the name Brodozer, we parked it in the back lot and we, we had it flexed out on some tires. And we put a picture of it and somebody online was like, dude, that's just a Brodozer. That thing's never going to go rock crawling. Some hardcore rock crawling guy said that. And I was like, okay, 
like that. Bet. Never oh, going to go rock crawling? Bet. He yeah. said, he said, how'd it feel? It was the first time I ever used it in a sentence. You are. It felt the times. Yeah. Uh, so, and so then, so then I said, "Bet this is gonna be lit." No. <laughs> He's two for two. He didn't do that. And then and then and then when I the next thing I did is when I made that thing lit. Then I went, "She, she, Boston, respectfully, Boston, respectfully." How do we do, guys? I don't know that one. So no cool. cap, no cap. Bet lit. Oh, cheesy. We belong on TikTok. Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs oh, down. Oh, it's a TikTok thing? It's like a, it's like, well, it's just like a younger generation. It's a younger thing. generation. We're got that, old, they got that crackhead energy. Wait, you didn't finish your story. What was the story? You were talking about bat, lit. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so we put it online, <laughs> and we were catching <laughs> and somebody's like, oh, it's just going to be a bro what, mall crawler, bro dozer. a bro dozer, and I was like, you know what? That's a great name. It is the bro dozer. Bam. Boom. We trademarked the name bro dozer. Was- so this truck got <laughs> built kind of quietly off camera and even off social media because we had so much. This was right when the show was starting to take off, and it was a build that was too far along to start following with the show. Mm-hmm. So we just had to finish it, and it turned into one of the most capable rock crawlers ever built because we put the. It was one of the first trucks out there with military axles too, with the MRAP axles. That Up actually until this point, functioned really well. Yeah, everybody had been using five tons, and so we bought a huge lot full of axle techs and started using them on everything. Yeah, and that's when they kind of became popular. I'm not saying we made them popular, but around that same time, we were some of the first people using them, and then. And we took the Brodozer to Moab, and it just dominated. In fact, it did so well Nobody that we it renamed it Game Genie. It was cheating. It just walked up everything. Mm-hmm. In fact, we were going up obstacles that were so difficult Backward. backwards just yeah. to prove how capable it was. Um, and, and sideways. And, and no one thought it could even get into some of the courses, but with the rear steer set up the way it was, like it went everywhere we wanted to go. That truck is so easy to drive and so reliable and so capable that we've let guys like Chuck Norris show up and smash cars with it. Mm-hmm. Guys guys who don't Marshawn have a ton Lynch. of experience, Marshawn Lynch had never driven a big truck like that before. He did. He a, jumped in it. He did a, a donut on top of a vehicle. Which drilled a hole in our parking lot. Still yeah. there. Yeah. That truck is easy to drive. It's fun to drive. It's capable. It's super powerful. It has saved the day more times than I can account. We it, took it to Texas. Took it to Texas. In put, the floods. Yep. Put uh, rice paddy tires on it and drove through neighborhoods helping rescue people. Yeah. We've driven it up in the snow. We've driven it in the mud. We've it driven also it did in the it did a sled pull. It did do a sled pull in Texas. It's been in multiple parades. Oh, it's gone to hospitals to make little kids happy. It went to my daughter's show and tell day. So the Brodozer brand became something that people fell in love with, which is when Monster Jam reached out to us and said, hey, you guys might be onto something. Do you guys want to build a Brodozer Monster Jam mm-hmm. truck? And we said, we're in. So that is what triggered us into building the Brodozer Monster Jam trucks. Now you have to understand that my Brodozer, the original rock crawler one, is not the one that I drive in competition. They're two totally different trucks. Monster trucks are full blown like tube chassis. They're like race vehicles designed to only run for a few minutes at a time. And it was one of the first diesel powered monster trucks in Monster Jam. The only other diesel truck that I knew of was um, Dave Razieras, who did the XDP. And he, he, by all means, was way ahead of us. He was years ahead of us running a Cummins. But why the reason why we called it the first diesel Monster Jam truck is because it was the first diesel powered truck that was able to compete in a Monster Jam show with Monster Jam. Um, Dave's truck, for some reason, they never let him in. Uh, I know there's a lot of drama surrounding that. And it's a bummer because Dave, great driver, awesome. amazing truck. And I take my hat off to him and give him full props for being the first that I know of like competition diesel monster truck. So now we have this Brodo's a monster truck that when we debuted it, people fell in love with it and it drives differently than any other monster truck out there. It's a completely different experience driving that truck because with the turbo spool and the, and the diesel engine, it doesn't instantly break parts like the other methanol trucks do. Instead, if you land upside down and you keep the throttle on, all of the energy gets stored into whatever the next move is going to be. So if you get traction, for example, Diesel Dave went and did a backflip, came up just a hair short, but he was on the <laughs> throttle and it went... Double backflip. So you'll see the footage of um, one of the cleanest. In fact, I think it definitely was the cleanest Monster Jam back to backflip. There's been other back to backflips, but Has not there? like that. Uh, that one was like violent, fast, crazy. Brodozer is a fast. truck that wins a lot of shows. It's a fan favorite. Um, and it's currently parked That's because sad. Monster Jam is only running at like 20% capacity while we're working through COVID. So we're hoping that as the restrictions continue to get lifted, then we can start doing shows with it again because I know that. Not, we're not the only ones that miss it. There's a lot of people that miss oh, the Brodozer and the Bro Camino Monster yeah. Jam truck. So what's cool is two of our favorite builds of all time became two crowd favorite and very iconic monster trucks. That's a big deal. It is. Like that you don't see that very often. In fact, we have 
thought about, and maybe if it works out, making one of our next, making one of our other builds into another Monster Jam truck for that guy to drive. Who knows if and when it'll happen, but if it does, then maybe you guys will see a Mega Rail yes. Monster truck, which would be awesome. Ooh. Let me end on this. Reason You're that it's number it? one, no, no, no. The reason that it's number one also is all three of us are very, very hard on vehicles. In fact, we've never driven anything that we didn't break somehow and had to fix, except for the Brodozer. The original motor, the original transmission, the original pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. Guess where the Brodozer's at right now? Where? Same place as the main Getting room. emissions put back on it, thanks to the uh, UPHE. You know, the only time Brodozer had any sort of damage was when this guy jumped it down in Moab, jumped it in the sand dunes, or no, sand dunes in St. George, and bottomed it out and put a hole into the oil pan. That's the only thing that ever got damaged. I know. I don't JB know if anything the, else has ever broken on it. And it didn't really break. We fixed that yeah. before it ever became an issue, so the motor didn't go. That's the, I mean, original, everything. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the JB Well is still in the bottom of the oil pan. Yeah. I wish everybody could have a chance to drive the Brodozer. I do too. Because there's nothing like it. It's mm. like it's literally like you're driving a video game. And in it, fact, it, we it use a, 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 a Atari, yeah, an Atari joystick joystick. for the rear steer. Mm -hmm. It's an electric cooler. It sits in the middle, so it keeps drinks cold all the time. It's got seating for five very comfortably. It's got a nice sound system. It's got lights. Mm -hmm. It's just the ultimate of ultimates. And if you think the, everything. the mud truck was good for doing donuts, a Brodozer blows it out of the water. It literally sits and spins on a dime. Yeah. yeah. We've still got so many more ideas and crazy things that we want to do that uh, we're going to do. Yeah, we're going to do all of them before we die. Which... Do you think do you think the Vruck or the uh, Hovercraft will ever make this list? Funny you should ask. You should go ahead and uh, you should watch watch uh, the last uh, video we did. Last video we did of top 10 cuz Vruck made I think somewhere I, number 4. I made him look into the camera and tell them that one day Vruck would be the Vruck's coming finished. The Vruck's coming back. He's told me that multiple times and I believe him every time. The Vruck's says making it. a comeback. It will. I know the Vruck has a special place in your heart. Yep. Why? I don't know why he loves it so much. I think you came up with the name. Maybe. Just love it. It's Frankenstein. Well, it'll yeah. be. It'll be. And it sits on a shelf. You know how I feel about things that get put on a shelf. It's true. You, it's a nightmare. They need to years. be taken off. Guys, I have one last favor to ask. It's Peacock. It needs to fly. It does need to fly. If you've enjoyed this, or if you enjoy any of our content, and if you want a chance to win one of my toys, any of these toys in this hangar right here, subscribe. I would like, not the airplane or the helicopter though, not yet. No. We are giving away a helicopter when we hit 10 million subscribers though, so giving that's... giving away the airplane? No. Not the airplane. Not the airplane. Do you, are we understood? Not the airplane. Wait, you're giving away the airplane. We're not I'm, giving I'm away the airplane. I need to put some words on the screen, a little disclaimer that I'm not giving away my $2 million airplane. But I am giving away any one of my toys here when we hit 750,000 subscribers. Guys, you guys know the deal. Every 250,000 subscribers that we get, every new subscribers to the channel, we give away another vehicle. We give you the chance to come in here, pick whatever you want. And that's to every subscriber that has subscribed, not just the 250 new ones. Yeah, that's the best part is if you, let's say you've been subscribed to my channel since before we hit 250,000 subscribers, right? And you're still subscribed when we hit 10 million subscribers. Well, my friend, you will have had 40 chances to win these different, various different vehicles that we've been giving away. And as the channel grows and we get into the millions, our prizes are going to start getting bigger and bigger and bigger until we get to the helicopter for 10 million. In fact, I'm thinking about up in the ante for 10 million. I might add a ripsaw to the lineup. I might add a boat to the lineup. You don't even have a ripsaw. I might just put them in the, in the fleet and say, come take your pick. Helicopter, ripsaw, boat. Basically, I want who our 10 million subscriber or whoever wins that giveaway to be able to own a vehicle that no way, no how could they ever own under any other circumstances. What kind of boat are we talking about, though? It'd be on the same level as a Ripsaw and a helicopter. That would be a yacht. Or a Pavati. Or a Pavati. Yeah. Ooh, maybe we'll give away a Pavati.